When you're hosting your application in Azure, you often have a lot of secret information that you don't want to spread around the portal or put in configuration files so you might accidentally check into source control. To help with this situation, Azure has a piece of functionality called Key Vault. Let's mash on how to use that. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Today's episode is brought to you by AppVayer, continuous integration services for Windows developers. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit today about Key Vault. Uh, so I just happen to be on a project where we are big into using Key Vault, and everybody loves Key Vault, and I thought I would do an episode on it, but I wanted to... Like, disclaimer with this with I don't really understand what additional security Key Vault provides over just keeping encrypted keys somewhere else. So the the way that I've always said it before is I've used VSTS to build up my environments using uh, Azure's, Azure Resource Manager templates or ARM templates for short. Uh, and I've just set like a, a parameter into that to be the password or the secret key that I'm using and then I've gone and encrypted that on the the VSTS side so it's said to be a secure string. But I think there are some applications for things like SSL certificates and that sort of thing. But anyway, let, let's get to and, using this and in in maybe. theory though, the idea is that you can delegate access delegate access based on keys, but then you've made the point as well that you can just drop to an Azure console and use your keys to get in and get the values that are stored in the vault. Right. So I, I don't know if maybe I'm missing something, and I'm sure that somebody will be kind enough to correct me in the comments below. Uh, but this is basically just another way of getting configuration for your application. So let's, uh, let's go and give this a try here. So I'm going to start off uh, over here in ye old Azure portal. So I have started off here by creating a key vault here. So this is just more services and key vault uh, in here. This is a key vault. Uh, so this is the, the monster key vault that exists inside of my Azure. And I have added to this a secret called GitHub secret. And let's maybe just go and create another one here. And we can take a look at what the process there looks like. Um, so I'm going to use this manual. So this could be a certificate that you're uploading. And I'm going to add a new key here. Oh, why it's figured those are good completions for this. So um, I don't know. I need a secret. Uh, new key. Oh, wait. Method of getting Kara now into center of. <laughs> Wow. Okay, uh, so people who are new to watching this series may not have noticed how much I like descriptive variable names, uh, but this is a good one here. Uh, and we'll enter the secret here, which is a just, well, I'm not going to tell you how it's encrypted yet, so we're going to wait. The suspense is building. Yeah, everyone's going to have to watch to the end now. Assuming that I'm not killed by some sort of ninjas. In the process <laughs> the, the car caramel bar ninjas are on their way already to your house. People who are younger would not know of this. but uh, Anyway, so that, that secret is added to the vault now. So I want to be able to access this information later. So the, the next thing I do is I want to kind of grant access to this information. And to do that, I need to create an application inside of the Active Directory, Active Directory of my Azure subscription. Yeah, so we'll whip over to this and we're going to register an application here. So we will create a new application and it is going to be Kara Milk and uh, yeah, Web API. That looks good. And the sign-on URL. So I don't actually need a sign-on URL here because I'm not using Azure Active Directory to do any authentication or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to give it like HTTP localhost.org. Uh, 
plug. Okay. So if we find that caramel one. Okay, so we have an application ID here, and I'm going to copy this application ID because we're going to need that. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a little segue here and I'll whip over to our application here. This is just a, a brand new ASP.NET Core 2 application, and I'm going to open up my app settings file. And in here, once it eventually opens, I'm going to put this in as my client ID. So I already have the, the vault listed here. I have a client secret from previously, but it's very unlikely that the key I generate now is going to be the same. So we'll go and create a new key here. It would be a problem it. if it was. Yeah. Well, at the, the moment we're filming this, there's uh, a lot of talk about the, the way the GUIDs are generated by Equifax. Uh, so this would well, this is hopefully here. better than their generation. Uh, we'll just do a... a Uh, and I can set some duration on this. So let's say that this uh, key is going to expire in a year's time. And once we hit save here, it'll actually go and generate the key. Now, this is the only time you get to see this key. If you forget to copy and paste this now, it's gone forever. So let's go and make sure we copy and paste that. So the solution, if you missed it, was you had to create a new one, right? You, wait, what's you said you can't get it. The solution to that, like if you lose your key, so you said you you can't see yep. it again, you would just create a new one and delete the old one, right? That's right. So if I close this tab, reopen it, it's now just a hidden value, and there's no way to get back at that value. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've got that bit set up there. So this is just registering the application. So now we want to go back over to our vault and grant some access to this application. Key vault and in here we are gonna go and check our access control. That's where it is. Uh, access policy, sorry. That's what I want to have here. So I'm gonna add a new one here. And in the principal here, I'm gonna go and Wait for this to load, and I'm going to grab the, the caramel corn we have. And then there's a, a set of permissions you can apply up here, but I'm going to go and manually select get and list for all of these. This is a fairly restrictive set of permissions here. They're not allowed to edit anything inside the key vault with this. Save that. Okay, so now our application is saved. It should now have access to all of the, the secrets that we had uh, installed in the application here. I'm going to hit save first. Oops. So let's just take a minute there, if you don't mind, Simon. There's a, a few sure. components moving uh, all at once. Um, so, and I think that, that for for most applications, some of these pieces, we could assume that there, these these things might already be in place. So your your key vault might be a way to share your PayPal credentials or something for the PayPal API across all of the various sites where you accept your, your PayPal monies. So your key vault might already be configured. You, you're going to have your application to which you might be adding this new feature to allow you to accept your your payment. And so the the process that the piece that we need to add then is the the role or the the instance of that application register it inside of Azure and then create those delegated permissions inside of the key vault itself yes that's right okay so you won't necessarily have all of those moving parts all at once you, you just walked through all of them as though none of those things were pre-existing right so if you were creating a new application this is sort of the the flow you would go through but if you have an existing application or you have an existing key vault there's obviously some shortcuts that you can take in there right all right so now what we need to do is we need to ensure that our application has the ability to access this information from the key vault um, and in order to do that we're going to drop over into our program now the one of the changes that is in asp dot net core 2 is some changes around what program.cs looks like so 
there used to be a bunch of different stuff in here and now we just do create default builder here and then on top of this we can set our configuration up so i'm gonna go and steal that from notepad it's a little bit long-winded but i can walk through it all uh, so this is gonna get the configuration settings for our application and we're gonna do a, a couple different things here so we're gonna start by just adding the, the JSON file and the environment variable, which is something that you would almost always do when you're setting this stuff up. Uh, but then we're gonna take a side step here. We're gonna build the configuration and we're gonna use the configuration to add an additional thing to our configuration. So you remember our app settings file here has the vault, the client ID and the client secret. And if you were hosting this inside of an Azure app service, then these would be settings that would appear inside your Azure app service. Uh, so we would get this stuff from the environment. Uh, once that's built, then we're gonna use those values to go out to the Azure Key Vault and pull down the additional values that we're looking for. Uh, so now maybe we can go and put those somewhere inside of our application. So I'm gonna jump over to our index at CSHTML. And I added at the top here an inject because of course Razor pages participate in the dependency injection framework. Uh, so I'm going to ask for an I configuration called configuration because I am pretty excited about names. Uh, and this is the part where I deeply regret that incredibly long variable name that I put in. I'm going to probably go and copy Now you'll need it. to type it all out. I'm probably not going to do that. You can get all the same spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid that I should have spelling mistakes. Uh, let's go back over to... I'll key vault here and see if we can dig that out. Watch it have ellipsis. Oh, no. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Son of a gun. All right. Oh, no, they've overridden right click, too. Maybe I can click right into it. Oh, oh thank goodness. Whew. <laughs> oh, hey, that's cool. I didn't notice this before. So you can add versions to this stuff. So I guess if you had a key that was rolling over at some point in the future, uh, then you could oh, interesting. time and date stamp them so it would roll over at the appropriate time. So maybe you have an SSL certificate. There is, there is a feature is in there. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm starting to become more sold on this key vault thing. All right, so let's put this in here and... We finally get to know the answer. Hit F5 and hope that this works. A few moving pieces that I could have messed up here. If the commercials that I watched growing up are any indication, I'm not actually going to find out the answer here. No, yeah. there will be a power cut or yeah. or something that will keep the, the caramel secret secret. Even even if we are able to properly record this, there's going to be some automated script out there that just messes up this part of the traffic when the video is being transmitted to viewers. The caramel secret internet scrubber. <laughs> It's taking a long time to load, so. That must mean it's working. Yeah, the agents of Capri's are uh, hot on our trail. <sighs> Here we go. There we go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the secret key that we have pulled out of the Azure Key Vault. Uh, I just got, I got to throw this out here. Now, um, I, we speak Canadian. We don't speak um, whatever dialect of English you speak, Simon. But how? Where? Where is it that you're from? Where they spell nozzle like that? <laughs> Probably in a place where they can't see what they've typed. <laughs> we'll accept that. <laughs> All right. So this is great. Nice to Key Vault. Um, and I don't know. It just it just kind of works. Uh, like kind I say, I'm not. Stuck. I'm not, I'm not like completely sold on key so, vault as a thing, but we have discovered while we've been looking at this, some nice features for it. Seeing you go through it, Simon, I, I feel like in a large organization where maybe it, it was a different person who was in charge of managing all those, those secrets in the key vault, uh, and, the, and that 
there's all those roles associated with it, I can see that being pretty useful. So only one, maybe one or two people would have access to the vault and actually be able to make changes to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then assign which applications have access to actually get those uh, values out of the vault. That I can see being pretty useful in a larger organization. Yeah, I think there's definitely some privilege separation stuff that that you could make a case for this being important to use. Most of the stuff I have dealt with, I just have access to the Azure account and I can do anything in it. But I think in a lot of places, it's a little more uh, tightly controlled than that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of industries too where you don't. I mean, as a developer, it might be a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want the liability of having to, um, like, the accountability of having production credentials in all environments. Yeah. Yeah. That's and even to pass certain audits, you might have to prove that certain people don't have access to it. This would allow you to do that. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. So, that's the simplest way of getting something out of Azure Key Vault. Uh, and assuming that anybody has been able to watch this episode, that they haven't been intercepted by the caramel, caramel secret police, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, then please feel free to leave them down in the section below. We will read every comment and question, and if we answer your question on air, we'll send you a handy dandy asp.net monsters sticker of which dave will pleasantly model he's the vanna white of our time mm, very nice uh, so we will see everybody on the next episode of the asp.net monsters cheers bye